So this is SPECS. It's my take on a frequency spectrum analyzer. There are other frequency spectrum analyzer patches on patch storage. Uh, my contribution to the conversation is not about finesse or anything like that. It's more about pretty light shows. Um, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll say if you're using this for a, a really sort of precise spectrum analyzer or any of those patches, there's a real limit to resolution with Soya because we've got five bars, you know, um, and only eight uh, frequencies that we can display at a time. So, you know, I just wanted to create something pretty to look at. That's my goal here. Um, so it operates in three different modes. Uh, first of all, I'll say audio comes in and is passed through in stereo. It's sum to mono for the analysis. Um, and there are three modes that you can select up here. Uh, one thing I'll point out just because I'm not going to mess around with it is that you can also set the center frequencies for the bandpass filters that are used to create the analysis. So if you want something different, you can have something different. Although again, there's a limit there to how precise Soya can be in this task. Um, but the three modes up here at the top, the first mode is a stomp switch mode. And that means uh, the color will only change when I press the stomp switch. So let's see that in action. might have seen it not change because the color that's changed to is determined probabilistically. So sometimes it ends up on the color that it's already on. Um, the second mode is a threshold mode and you can set the threshold down here. Uh, and, and this takes the sum of all of the bandpass, uh, the envelope followers that are on the other end of the bandpass filters and when the threshold uh, falls below that, no, when it rises above that amount, so it has to fall first and then rise above that, uh, it'll trigger a new color. So again, let's just sort of see that in action. Uh, it can take a little bit of playing around with the threshold to figure out what works. And then the mode we started on was an LFO mode. Now this has MIDI clock going in uh, from the Roland S1 to uh, the uh, specs patch. But if you don't have MIDI clock, you can use this as a tap tempo input or this center stomp switch as a tap tempo input. Um, but MIDI clock will override that. So again, uh, then we have some controls for uh, how the display works. The first is a gain control around 0.25 is the actual gain of the audio coming into the patch. Uh, but, you know, you might have noticed that that's not really pushing uh, the spectrum analyzer. Again, this isn't meant for, like, precision analysis, so we can boost the gain uh, to have the pretty colors fill more of these rows. And some of that in, in this case is a product of me trying to keep the levels in check. 
The next option is smoothing, and this controls the rise and fall of the envelope filters or envelope followers. Uh, you may see uh, when I turn this down, some of the UI buttons will sort of sparkle red as they switch from uh, a CV value to zero. It's just something the UI buttons do and the smoothing can help alleviate that. Um, so. And you can also smooth it out. I mean, again, the, the real idea for this patch is just something pretty to look at. So as you smooth it out more, the changes are not particularly accurate, but that might be something that just looks nice. So we see less bouncing in these layers, but you get sort of these building um, frequencies. Uh, I'll turn that down to, I think about 0.5 is pretty good. Um, and then the direction. So each time the color changes, the direction, you may have noticed this, it works in conjunction with the refresh rate. The refresh rate can go up to about 140 hertz, which should appear more or less instantaneous to you. And the refresh rate is basically how quickly the color changes. So a new color will be selected and we'll get a, a change in that that goes uh, either from uh, left to right or right to left. Um, first, I'm just going to show the refresh rate. So this is at maximum refresh. And like I said, it, it's pretty close to instantaneous. If you're really trying to catch it, you can, but I don't know why you would. But as we turn that down and we get an indicator somewhat of the refresh rate here in this button next to it. It's not super accurate because the rates that it goes to at the highest level are too much for the little UI button to track in any way that's meaningful, but So you see uh, in the, um, as you slow down the rate, you get different colors uh, on the screen, at the, on the display at the same time. Um, and you can find a sort of happy medium where they dance across things in a way that you find interesting. So again, this works in conjunction with the direction. Each time the color changes, there's a coin flip. This is a probabilistic control. When it's at zero, it will always move from left to right. And when it's at one, it'll always move from right to left. Uh, but if you put it somewhere in between, we'll see colors go one way and then the other. I, I think it's pretty nice. So that's the direction control. And then on this page, we have the color mixer. Um, there's a control called color define, and this lets you define what colors are used uh, in the little light show. So as you move this up, the uh, UI button above it will change colors to reflect what color has been defined or selected. Um, and then at the bottom is the mixer. This is a probabilistic mixer. So if uh, one of these values is much higher than the others, it's more likely to come up. Um, but if you just want to use two or three or four colors, you can just turn these chance uh, values down. Um, but you can also sort of determine how likely certain colors are gonna come up. So if you want some red and blue and occasionally a green, you know, you can do that. Um, but that's specs, that's, that's all there is to it. Um, so if you 
check out the patch and you like it, uh, please like it on patch storage as well. Um, and any other creators patches. Uh, and that's all I have got today. This is a pretty, I hope, straightforward one with enough flexibility to sort of make it your own, but pretty immediate. You make some noise. It does pretty color things that kind of correspond to the frequency. Uh, but again, if you're really looking for spectrum analysis, uh, I hook things up to a, you know, an oscilloscope or a computer or something, you know, and this is more of a novelty, I think, than a, you know, a surgical tool, but a fun novelty. So uh, I hope you enjoy it and have a good day.